Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary. They, Ner, Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine programming. And today we're going to be rolling up on Cabernet Franc. And that's how we do. Cab Franc, a grape that absolutely positively is being dis disrespected in the wine industry and a, a, a wine that, a grape, excuse me, that deserves a lot more attention, especially from the Loire Valley, which we've got two wines today, a Bourgoy and a, a Chinon. And then we've also got a very serious producer out of California, very cult-like, a guy by the name of Sean Larkin, who's actually a very good friend of mine. Let me throw that out there. So it's no, you know, no, uh, what is it, like church and state, you know, disclosure. Conflict of, Conflict of interest. Mott, that is why we have you here. How many bottles? You're only opening three bottles. It's like the 90th time you've opened something. Anyway, um, very excited about today's show because uh, I'm very passionate about Cabernet Franc uh, from the Loire Valley. Uh, I, we're talking about expanding the palate in this chapter 400 to 500 episodes. Um, and we want to really look at different wines from this area. Chinons and Bourgois usually roll in at 15 to 20 dollars, so they're far from inexpensive. But Cabernet Franc as a whole, Good riddance. I'll talk to you later. Um, as a whole, um, bring a lot of thunder, in my opinion, and really are wines that are completely overlooked, undervalued, and huge opportunities, especially for people trying to expand their palate, expand their mind, try different things. Mott, let's let's link up the old Borgoy show. Link it up, Mott, um, that we did a little while back where you can focus a little bit more on Borgoy. But right now, we're going to start with one, a Yannick Amaro, uh, 2005. Bourgoy, uh, this is from the single vineyard La Coudre, uh, 18 US dollars, 91 points, wine spectator. Uh, this comes from Peter Wygant, who is one of the great importers in the US, bringing, bringing a lot of interesting stuff, interesting character, um, but uh, definitely always bringing a lot of really cool wines. Um, I always like seeking out what he's doing. And uh, this wine from Bourgoy uh, is Cabernet Franc, and uh, let's see what's going on really dark, deep color. Um, what I find interesting about Bourgoy, it's a you know, small little area in Loire, um, limestone, uh, gravel, and uh, sand, you know, soils. Uh, very small production area, only 2,900 acres planted uh, in the area. So a place that really is focused on making really great wines, and as a whole, I've been awfully impressed with the wines coming out of the area. Snippy sniff. giggling inside because I know that this is a show that's very close to my heart and I'm gonna probably like these wines because I normally do like Cap Franc but I'm very controversial on it because there are a lot of people that can't deal with the funk the funk in the trunk that these wines bring and they bring it this wine is overloaded with Brussels sprouts celery green pepper vegetables for days it's like it's like the Justice League of America of vegetables. You've got like every one of them. Batman is celery. Superman is Brussels sprouts. Wonder Woman is radishes. I mean, it's, it's, it's just loaded with veggies. You know, old school veggie vendors at flea markets would adore this wine. They would feel very comfortable. And it's like dirty vegetables. You know, it's like the vegetables I eat when I go to the farmer's market. And my mom's like, you gotta wash that stuff. And I'm like, mom, I don't roll like that. I'm not scared of it. And you know, so that's how it is. It really smells extremely dirty vegetable-like on the nose. There's also heavy doses of cow manure. You are in the country, my friends, right now as you roll and smell this wine. Aromatically, it is explosive and right up my alley. However, this wine would really turn off a lot of New World fans. If you're starting to see, and I noticed the other day when I said my palate was starting to roll a little bit towards the new world, back towards it, you know, I was like new world, then I went real old world, and then over the course of Wine Library TV, I've gone a nudge up. I noticed a lot of people, mainly I hope for my influence, because they're trying different things, are saying they're going old world. Well, this is old world. If you want to go old school, if you want to watch a black and white television, sit by the radio and watch, listen to the Jack Dempsey fight, that's what this is all about. And it's real darn fine. Let's give it a whirl. Ripping. Like a line drive 
from the steroid using Lenny Dykstra. You know, that was the real big one in Philly, not the skinny chap that we saw at the Mets. Very heavy on the palate, loaded with chocolate covered cherries mixed in with a brigade of vegetables. I mean, this is like celery leaves, tricolory salad, mescaline salad. I mean, just, oh my God, and the funkiness that on the finish. <laughs> This is such a great food wine. You know, I could see this wine lasting for five to 10 years, really mellowing out a little bit, probably adding a little silky layer to it, getting a little funkier along the way as well. <laughs> I'm telling you, Ma, Oof, this, this is why the Thunder Show sucks. We need a... We need a camera looking at Mott's face. You would have laughed your ass off right now. You're spot on with, this, with your smell. Thank you, Mott. He has to say it. You paid me to say it. <laughs> now, if you look at Mott's face, you understand what I understand. Mott has really been going towards the sugar wines, you know, the Takais. He's a young, developing wine drinker, and he's going to feel naturally close to the wines that develop sugar and fruity. And this is a wine that's totally away from that. I just set up Mott. I'm enjoying the pain that is ripping through his face. Yes, it has a lot to do with the New York Giants, for example. But I wanted him to experience it because, you know, this point that I made just with the monster over here is that this is not, you know, caution. Beware. I'm all bowdy bowdy and rowdy rowdy on this wine. But I'm telling you, if you're just getting into wines, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna adore this flavor profile. Blah. However, there's so many of you that are so wild and, and adventurous and, and scholarly. You know, I could just see a lot of you really enjoying this experience, though you're, you, you'd grind through it and be like, I don't know what he's talking about. One day you will. I'm like your grandpappy, Anderson. One day, chap, you'll understand. And I'm telling you, one day, this style will really appeal to you because as your pal develops, and you continue to trust it, and you let it try different things, it's gonna change. Are you the same person you were 10 years ago? No way in heck. And that's how, what happens with your palate. I'm about this wine, it's loaded with cherries, I love that, it is loaded with celeries, and just, you know, beets and tomato, it, it's so vegetable. And it's very barnyard and funky. I'm telling you, it is the classic old male man with a, you know, a cane and his stinky dog barking at you in the middle of nowhere in France and it's raining like it is outside. Ma, give him a little zoom of like the outside. It's all gloomy like that and it's raining and you're driving around and your navigation's like, turn left. And you're like, bitch, I can't turn left. And it's all like that. And then you see a vegetable stand and you're like, Huh, I'm hungry, and you stop, and the guy's there, and you you start smelling all the aromas, the dirty dog, and the funky you know poop, and the cows in the background, and it's all smelly, and the guy's got all these vegetables, and they're kind of dirty, and it's raining, and it's muddy, but you know what? When you taste it, it's like the best, cleanest, most fresh tomato you've ever had, or radish, or turnip, that's what this, this is bringing me in that kind of mindset. And you can see why I love wine so much, because it paints a picture. I'm a pip, you know what? Come on, I'm an artist. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a picture painter. And that's what this wine brings to the table. I think kudos to Wine Spectator for recognizing the quality of this wine. I'm completely on board with them. Amazing one minute to two minute length on this wine. Gives me almost like a chocolate component on the aftertaste. You're almost gonna taste like a chocolate kind of thing going on. I'm going to confirm with them. I'm going 91 points on this absolutely spectacular Cabernet Franc from the Bourgoy that is absolutely not for everybody. As a matter of fact, not for the majority of you. That was good. Ripping good. Ripping good. Funky as heck though. Oleg Marais, 2004, Cuvée de Tiru, uh, Chinon, Cabernet Franc based wine, 19 US dollars. Once again, 91 points wine spectator. And kudos to the spectator to really starting to recognize this part of the world. They've been doing a lot more reviews. We'll see if we agree like we did on the last one, which we did exactly. Uh, Chinon, a little bit of a bigger area. Um, Planted 95% Cabernet Franc. There's some Cabernet planted in Chinon. This wine's also, you know, get $19, 91 points. 5,000 acres in Chinon uh, planted. So, you know, again, small areas producing very interesting wines. I just burped, that's kind of funny. Anyway, great little color. See my little football? It's cool, right? 
Uh, I didn't steal from your desk this time either. No, I think I took it from somewhere else. Brandon's, I think. Sniffy sniff. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you guys, I can do shows about Loire Valley red wines for the rest of my life. Maybe, you know what? Hello everybody and welcome to Loire Valley TV. I am your host, Gary They Nur Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Cab Franc Hour. Maybe I'm gonna go to that because that's how much I enjoy these wines. They bring so much pleasure to me. And as a matter of fact, I'm perplexed right now why I don't drink more of them casually. Mainly because I'm at home usually tasting for thought, but they're really cool. Smell this mod. I mean, again, just very interesting. This smells like mama's tomato sauce. Like you made the sauce, again, vegetables, but there's almost like a, a grounded meat kind of component going on on the nose. I mean, it's so, so different. Lots of tomatoes coming through on this nose. Uh, again, celery roots, what did you get, Mama? Vegetable? I didn't get the tomato, I smelled the celery. Almost like a celery seed. God, I'm getting a lot of like, it really makes me think of like, tea, you know, um, what's the, Olive Garden, you know, just a sauce, like, but that, like, that's the cheap stuff. Like, mama's really, mama, mama, you know, mama. Just Nats. felt like saying mama. You know, what? Nanas. Nanas, you like God, this really is delicious. Green peas, English green peas coming through on the nose as well. And I'm really enjoying it. Very lacking any kind of fruit on the nose whatsoever, like none. Very interesting. Let's give it a whirl. Ripping. I mean, just like Donnie Baseball in '85, like, sing, like like those singles, right up, you know, like just right up the middle. Every time, you know, he was gonna get a hit. That's how some of these top producers. And again, Neil Rosenthal is the importer on this one. Again, you know, when you've got great importers and you've got a great area, guys, these wines are 18 and 19 dollars. Now they're very distinct, but they are absolutely grossly underpriced in comparison to the rest of the wines in the world, but it comes down to people not really drinking this style, not a lot of demand, I get it. Let's take advantage of it. This is a really wonderful bottle of wine. This is a little bit more new world on the initial attack. There's like a black licorice candied strawberry component with a lot of weight when you first attack this wine, and I think that really appeals a lot more to the New World fan. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is definitely a wine that I can see a lot more New World fans getting on board, but don't get it twisted. This is an extremely old world, greenish, you know, like leaves kind of component. Great backbone, tremendous tannins, really firm, great balance and focus. I mean, this is just, you know what it, I think what really comes down to on these wines? It's a very distinct flavor. And if you don't like it, I get it, and psh, I actually expect it. But the way these wines are made, both producers so far have shown amazing complexities, uh, great transition moves from the beginning to the mid palate, and an extraordinary ability to accentuate the flavors on the length and the finish. Just gorgeous longevity on these wines. Um, I'm really enjoying the dark flavors of this. I almost get a forest floor, mushroom kind of component going on in this wine. I really like the blackberries that are singing and dancing throughout my entire palate. Like they're ballerining, ballerining on my mouth. I'm just really into this wine as well. A little bit less than the last wine. I'm gonna go 90 points on this wine, but again, highly recommend it if you're trying to expand your palate Think outside the box, mix it up. Please, 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 please make sure this week you find a Loire Valley wine for, let me rephrase that, a Loire Valley red wine for the weekend. Really good wine, kudos, very solid. So different. And finally, disclaimer, very good friend. Larkin, 2005 Cabernet Franc, 60 US dollars, 92 points Parker, and was that a celebration when he emailed me that, good for him. Larkin has, Sean Larkin used to be a uh, sommelier right at a local restaurant here in Melbourne, went out to California, followed his dream. You know, he's a little bit of a, what do you say, player, playboy? He's an interesting character, but uh, he decided to make Cab Franc, he was passionate about it, 
and it had a little cult following. We were all supporting, and then Parker scored it, and everybody wants it, and he's a big shot now. So he doesn't return the phone calls. I understand. I respect that. Anyway, 60 US dollars, 92 points Parker for this Napa Valley Cap Franc. Nice, nice color. Let's give it a little bit of a snippy sniff. Now, right away, you can tell the new world aspects compared to the old country, you know? It's like the grandson compared to the grandfather that came over on the ship. It's a very different animal, and that's what's going on here. There's a little bit of a, huh? Oak monster, and he's bringing along a vanilla pack, you know, a big bucket of vanilla. Uh, so, uh, there is subtle oak and vanilla flavors coming through the nose. It's still greenish, because that's what Cab Franc does. It's interesting, let's give it a whirl. Solid tannins, good structure backbone, um, nice creaminess, great weight, very new world, a bomb of a wine, lots of oak. Uh, uh. Not for me. And I really think it's a poor QPR. And it's really standing out in comparison to these two wines. And if you had this with $40, $50 Cabernets from Napa Valley, you'd be like, oh, that's an interesting Cab Franc. It's different, it's good. I just don't see how anybody in their right mind would not buy a three pack of mixed of these over one bottle of this. I find this to be somewhat masked by the oak. The vanilla is over the top. Sean, I'm, listen, I'll call you later. It's just a, oh, <laughs> I had to jump in there. Um, it's just a wine that I'm not feeling. I, I just think it's overdone. I think it's Makeup City. And even though you're a pretty girl, it's like, take that off. Mistake. I find it very one-dimensional. It doesn't give you the second and third tier layers or length that the last two wines did. And it's half pregnant. It's a Cab Franc trying to be a Cabernet. And I don't get it. I'm gonna score this wine 86 plus points and give it a major pass with five Zs. Anyway, question of the day. Do you promise me to seek out a Loire Valley Cab Franc this week and drink it this weekend and then come back to this episode and leave a comment about your experience? Because a lot of you have said you don't leave comments because you watch it the next day or two or three days later and you feel like the train has left, the boat has sailed. I read them all. They come in a different back end thing for me. I love it. Be part of the Vayner Nation. Support it. Support it, my friends, because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not. Sorry, Sean.